Gina Lollobrigida, movie star and sex symbol, is dead at 95. She began her career in her native Italy and, although she achieved fame in America, worked more often in Europe. She later had a second career as an artist and filmmaker. A young, dark-haired Gina Lollobrigida reclining on a haystack, her left hand behind her head. Gina Lollobrigida in the 1953 Italian-French comedy Fan Fan La Tulipe. A year after it was released in the United States, she was on the cover of Time magazine, credit, Rialto Pictures. Gina Lollobrigida, the Italian movie actress who became one of the post-World War II era's first major European sex symbols, has died. She was 95. Gennaro San Giuliano, Italy's culture minister, confirmed Ms. Lollobrigida's death on social media. He did not say where or when she died. Ms. Lollobrigida had already appeared in more than two dozen European films when she made her first English language movie, John Huston's 1953 camp drama, Beat the Devil, in which she played Humphrey Bogart's wife and partner in crime. That film, and the attention she garnered in Fan Fan La Tulipe, an Italian-French period comedy released in the United States the same year, were enough to put her on the cover of Time magazine in 1954. She went on to unqualified American movie stardom, exuding a wholesome loostiness in a handful of high-profile films. She starred in Trapeze, 1956, with Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, 1956, as Esmeralda, Quasimodo's beloved beauty, Anthony Quinn played Quasimodo, Solomon and Sheba, 1959, a biblical epic with Yul Brynner, come September, 1961, a romantic comedy with Rock Hudson, and Buona Sera, Mrs. Campbell, 1968, a comedy about an unwed mother. Throughout her career, however, she continued to make many more European films than American ones. She starred with the continent's leading men, including Jean-Paul Belmondo, Marcello Mastriani, Jean-Louis Trintignant, and Yves Montand. Sign up for the Movies Update newsletter, a weekly roundup of movie reviews, news, stars, and award season analysis. Get it sent to your inbox. A 1955 film, La Donna Più Bella del Mondo, The Most Beautiful Woman in the World, a term some in Hollywood came to use about Ms. Lalo Brigida herself, released in the United States as Beautiful But Dangerous, brought Ms. Lalo Brigida her first major acting award, the David D. Donatello, Italy's equivalent of the Oscar. She won the Donatello twice more, for Veneer Imperial, 1962, in a tie with Silvana Mangano, and for Buonasera, Mrs. Campbell, in a tie with Monica Vitti. Ms. Lalo Brigida standing on a trapeze, flanked by Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis. They all have one arm raised and are dressed in circus costumes. Ms. Lalo Brigida with Burt Lancaster, left, and Tony Curtis in the 1956 film Trapeze. Credit, Associated Press. Ms. Lalo Brigida was always considered more a sex symbol than a serious actress, at least by the American press, but she was also nominated for a BAFTA Award as Best Foreign Actress in Pain, Amore e Fantasia, 1953. She received Golden Globe nominations for Buona Sera, Mrs. Campbell in 1969 and for a recurring role on the primetime television soap Falcon Crest in 1985. After two decades in front of the camera, she embarked on a multifaceted second career as artist and filmmaker. She published her first book of photographs, Italia Mia, in 1973. Believe it or not, she takes good pictures and isn't just trading on her name, Jean Thornton of the New York Times wrote. She wrote, directed, and produced Retrato di Fidel, a documentary based on her exclusive interview with Fidel Castro, the communist leader of Cuba, which was shown at the 1975 Berlin Film Festival. She was also a sculptor, and an exhibition of 38 of her bronze pieces was presented at the Pushkin Museum in Moscow, among other venues, in 2003. Ms. Lalo Brigida was awarded the French Legion of Honor in 1993. 
She ran unsuccessfully for the European Parliament in 1999. Lugina Lalo Brigida was born on July 4, 1927, in Subiaco, Italy, east of Rome. She was one of four daughters of Giovanni Lalo Brigida, a furniture maker, and Giuseppina, Mercury, Lalo Brigida. In her teens, she studied art. But after she was discovered by a movie director, Mario Costa, she began appearing in small roles in 1946. By 1949, she was a star, billed second in Los Passa Non Puo Attendera, The Bride Can't Wait. The next year, she appeared in Miss Italia. Inspired by her real-life experience, she had come in third in the 1947 Miss Italy pageant. The winner, Lucia Bose, and the first runner-up, Gianna Maria Canale, also went on to movie careers. A much older Ms. Lalo Brigida, dressed in red and wearing earrings and a necklace, her chin resting on his left hand. She is not looking at the camera, but seems to be staring into the distance. Ms. Lalo Brigida in New York in 2010. After two decades in front of the camera, she embarked on a multifaceted second career as artist and filmmaker, credit. Keith Bedford for the New York Times. After her film career wound down in the early 1970s, Ms. Lalo Brigida appeared on television in Europe and the United States, including the Falcon Crest episodes and an American television movie, Deceptions, 1985, in which she played an excitable duchess entertaining in Venice. Her last feature film appearance was in XXL, 1997, a French comedy that also starred Gerard Depardieu about a Jewish family in the garment trade. She married Milko Skafik, a Yugoslavian-born physician who became her manager in 1949. The couple separated in 1966 and divorced in 1971. Their son, Milko Jr., survives her, along with a grandson. In 2006, she announced plans to marry Javier Rigal Y. Raffles, a 45-year-old Spanish businessman. But she canceled the wedding less than two months later, reportedly because of overwhelming press attention. Ms. Lalo Brigida broke a thigh bone in a fall last year and had surgery to repair it in September. She said she was able to walk again soon afterward. Ms. Lalo Brigida was often outspoken in interviews. In 1969, she suggested that women pretended to be stupid in front of men. She claimed to have no beauty secrets and to do no exercise other than dancing, and to have no objections to being seen as a sex object and being told that she had a beautiful body. Why should I be offended, she said in a 1995 interview with the New York Times. It's not an insult. Yet she had grown philosophical with age. Success is something that goes up and down, she said in the same interview. I was hungry, I was rich, the life changed again, and now I'm not rich, but I still have my mind. Finally, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you soon.